हेलो फ्रेंड्स सलाम नमस्ते आदाब सतल केम छो दिस इज नीरज शुक्ला ओनर इन डायरेक्टर ऑफ स्कोलबर्ग इंटरनेशनल प्राइवेट लिमिटेड इज हियर सुपर एक्साइटेड टू स्टार्ट योर लर्निंग जर्नी ऑन एच एच सिस्टम फॉर ऑयल एंड गैस एंड मराइन इंडस्ट्री यस वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द कोर्स ऑन एच वैक डिजाइन इंस्टॉलेशन टेस्टिंग कमिशनिंग ऑनलाइन कोर्स on the marine oil and gas marine oil and gas systems you know why i am excited over here that you know all these years of experience all these years of knowledge i am go- i'm going to put it in this course i am going to put it- so i am super excited i cannot imagine you know that how much uh, i would be le- i would be telling you would be learning a lot from that you know so just be focused and we'll start it one by one but before starting i wish to tell that you know and before we start we should know what is marine oil and gas industry it looks like you know what it means and it itself is a big ocean you know of knowledge so we would be covering only the touch points basic over here in this session that you know what the platform means or what types of platforms are there how many people are required to run these platforms so those some basic points you know we are going to touch over here in this session so just stay focused and listen to what i'm saying and you will get a glimpse of what i'm saying uh, so let's go one by one so this is offshore oil and gas production system okay please note that you know what i'm going to tell it's it's a big ocean itself so i'm just covering up shortly so you understand what it means so when you design the system there are certain terminologies what i'm using so you can grasp it very quickly that's the whole purpose of See now here are some major elements of offshore production system, and these are the terminology which you may often hear. You know, and it's like a well, and well platforms and well servicing rigs, and feeder subsea pipeline, and processing platform, and export pipelines for oil and gas, then tanker for evacuation of oil. You know what does it mean? Because these terminologies, you know, while designing the system, you will often hear that. a well or well platform or well head platform or feeder pipeline and processing platform you know what does it mean no normally what we call is you know this is the upstream side of an industry what we call there are three sides in oil and gas industry one is up, upstream side midstream side and downstream side so you need to focus clearly that you know what i'm trying to say here and because days again that like i say as i said these terminologies are different over here in building commercial center of if you go to building and all if you go to commercial complexes and all in the residential towers and all terminologies are different you know and this uh, oil and gas industry the terminology are different so you need to be aware of the terminologies commonly used in this industry so you will often hear this terminologies so you should not get confused with this and as i said that uh, the very limited knowledge is available in the public domain so i want to open it up to you to enter into this field and make your career so in the oil and gas so this is some of the terminologies which are commonly used It is wells wells see well is nothing but oil well no. it's a logical but you are smart enough to understand it's oil well so it's a uh, subsea platform wells and uh, on this wells where your oil is being found or oil is been uh understood that oil is there beneath the surface based on the geological surveys you know you construct a platform over that particular uh area where you have found oil so to enable to start drilling over there of the oil okay so this is that is the area uh, we call it as a well well area or the platform wells next is well at platforms where you construct your platform we okay, constructing a platform is again a different ball game and that can be covered afterwards also this has nothing to do with hvac how to construct a platform is not pertain to hvac it is better to have a knowledge but that can be covered in some other time but well platform is nothing but a platform which you construct over the well to enable uh, the structure or enable system to take out the uh, oil from that then third is the feeder subsea pipelines these are the pipelines you know from which the oil comes up 
and processing platform is there processing platform is nothing but uh, it's a platform uh, where the processing basic processing happens through a lot of uh, processing equipment are kept there so basic pro basic processing of the oil happens over there to take out and take out the mud out of it or a lot of processes are there but that is nothing but into HVAC so let's focus it what is the basic terminologies export pipelines are there for oil and gas and there are tankers for the evacuation of oil see there are basically pipelines are there because if you see uh, when the basic processing happens then that particular oil or gas has to be transferred okay to the other location for the further processing so that happens through these pipelines and tankers are there to take out this particular oil for the further processing on the refineries okay so this is how uh, the basic structure it actually this is very very basic one and a detailed one is into the we are not covering over here in this course because that has nothing to do with HVAC how the oil is processed and all our purpose is how we are going to provide the comfortable and safe conditions for the humans who are working over here so that's the whole purpose so this is just an outline of what happens in oil and gas industry so as we say now before we enter into the industry we know what the industry is so this is just a basic structure i'm giving to understand what the industry is here are the types of slide. offshore platform now we are going to see one by one see if you see the water depth and the type of platform it is not a single platform or type of platform you can use it for uh, entire uh, structure you know it, it depends you know as a condition as you know that in the building sector also uh, depends on the site condition you need to choose a different type of a building structure in building also you do the geological analysis survey you understand type of structure below whether there's a rock is there or there's no rock there's a lot of sand is there as you know the rock, if you find the rock then from uh, building a foundation is easier you don't have to uh, drill a lot similarly if your water depth is high uh, your platform's size also varies so these are some of the platform types here over here uh, which are commonly used in industry so if any meeting and awesome terminology somebody uses like fixed platform or compliant tower or uh, sea star you know, what you should know what it what it means so this is some of the examples i have given over here so this is too technical however but just to make you understand that at different sea levels or different type of seas or shallow water or deep water these are some of the structures uh, which are commonly used for the industry so just take a note of it if you see now let's come up the oil platforms okay what does it mean an oil platform or oil rig is a large structure used to house the workers machinery is needed to drill and or the extract oil and the natural gas to the wells in ocean and bed Okay, it, when we say oil platforms, basically it falls under two categories. One is the process platform where the processing happens of the oil. One is the LQ platform, it means the living quarter where the accommodation people they need to stay there. Okay, uh, it rarely happens that you know the processing and the LQ platforms are same. Normally, it never happens because there is a safety issue. So always processing platforms can separate. And living quarter is always kept separate, and they have been normally linked to the a bridge uh, connecting with uh, two. Uh, so if a person has to go for the processing, he will go to the bridge, and again after finishing the work, he will come back and again stay to its accommodation. So that's the whole purpose. So this is a, basically it's a steel structure basically. So and it's not in the oil and gas offshore industry. We don't use cement concrete to build the walls. So anyway, what we use, we'll cover it in the next session. But just to give it an idea, the oil platform or oil rig is a large structure uh, used to house the workers and machinery needed to drill or extract the oil uh, through the ocean bed. We call it the ocean bed. Okay, so uh, ocean bed means nothing but uh, a structure. Or, or, or surface of the ocean from where you are going to take out the oil in simple I am going to keep it as simple as possible to understand without using any too much technical uh, stuff then second is depending on the circumstances the platform may be attached to the ocean floor uh, consist of artificial islands 
or it could be floating. As I explained earlier, if the ocean bed is lying at 6,000-7,000 feet below, then there is no point in putting the structure okay, because it cannot be stable. So in this case, because of the waves, are waves pressure is too much. The waves are there, and again the wind is there. Then combined effect of wind and uh, waves is you know all the two is a different ball game. So here what it is is but it's been done that there are several types of uh, platforms as we as we saw earlier, and these platforms are normally uh, designed in a way that it could be floating one, it could be art, it could be an artificial island. Or it could be on the ocean bed. It's very interesting subject, you know. But no, we'll be focusing only pertaining to H fact, and so we'll cover only basic terminologies. So generally, these oil uh, platforms are located on continental shelf through the technology, and uh, as the technology has gone up, the drilling and production in the deep water becomes much more feasible and more profitable. As we seen earlier, there was a lot of risk because technological advances were not there. But now, since the technology has gone up, now people are uh, using the technology and making the uh, platforms much stronger uh, to go into the deep water and do the drilling than the earlier. Now it has become much safer as than earlier. So in the deep water, also the oil is there, so we should not miss that. So with the latest technological advances, now it has become possible. A typical platform uh, you may have around. 30 well heads located on the platform, and the directional uh, drilling allows the reservoir to be accessed in both. The, this is a bit technical, but I meant to say that you know, uh, with this technological advances, uh, you can do, you can drill a bit more and can be more profitable. That's what, that's what it means to say. It has 30 well heads, and uh, directional drilling is again a different topic. We are not going to cover over here because it's not but Too much part because it has nothing to do with H A the directional drilling. So we'll go to the, the next point. There's many platforms on the remote well head umbilical connections. It's again a too technical for H A to know. Though it's an interesting topic altogether, it can be covered in some other session, in the, or in the question and answer session you can ask me. But this is not. This is a, just a, an example uh, of you know, what the oil and gas industry is. As you, as you could see, this is a fixed platform, and these fixed platforms, you know, they have a legs over there, and as you could see, and legs are going directly into the seabed, and they are getting installed over here. And such platforms are virtue of their immobility designed for long-term use. They are not, they are not made for, you know, taking up from one location and putting it in another location. It is, they are not designed for that. They are designed for the fixed. Uh, mobility. They are, they are designed for the fixed location, no more mobility. So they are designed for the long-term use. So there are various uh, structure are used for the, the steel jacket, caisson, then floating vessel, even the floating concrete. But the floating concrete is not very common these days. So uh, the caisson and the, uh, the steel structure is very very common over here. So this is one of the type, and this is mainly the very economical. Uh, Type you know, very economical in construction, so this is preferred to fix platforms over here now in, this, in the industry. So when somebody uses the terminology, it's a fixed platform. So you need to understand what does it mean. This is how the fixed platform looks like. Then second one is the semi-submersible platform. You know, semi-submersible platform are nothing but these platforms have a legs of sufficient buoyancy to cause the structure to float, but the weight uh, sufficient to keep the structure upright. It, it means that you know this platform is not a fixed platform. It can move from place to place, and uh, because it has to work in certain amount of water, uh, which is quite deep enough, so you cannot install the fixed platform. So if you see over here, there's a buoyancy uh, effect has been created by means of this structure. So it can keep the platform in upright direction, as you could see, and. Uh, It will make sure that you know the platform stability will not get affected. It will be buoyant, and it doesn't get operated into the very fierce sea. So uh, this is what the construction, and this is what it means that semi-submersible platform over here. So a semi-submersible, if somebody terminology comes in a meeting, 
So you need to understand your semi submersible is something which is not fixed. So it is kind of a floating platform. Again, this has nothing to do with HVAC. HVAC design is not going to change whatever your platform is. But this is just for the understanding that, you know, in the meeting you should understand or in the industry you are working, you should know what the semi submersible is, what is fixed platform is. So you know, they are they are generally anchored by chain, wire rope and poly, uh, polyester rope during the drilling operations. Uh, though they can also be kept in place by dynamic positioning. So there are various methods to that, do, do that. But normally in the industry which is commonly used platform is the fixed platform only because it's always a safe to have a fixed platform. Wherever there is impossible to have a fixed platform with the depth of water, there are certain options. And there is a jack-up platform is there. Uh, this normally the jack-up platforms you will see will not be a huge one. Uh, as compared to the other platform, but still uh, they are used. The jackups, as the name suggests, the platform uh, that is jacked up above the sea using the legs, which can be lowered like a jack. You know? So it can be uh, as this jack, uh, this uh, weather platforms can or these platforms can go up or down uh, like a jack. It goes up up and down depending on the water depth. So they adjust themselves like that. So this is what the, the jack-up platform means. And again, uh, these platforms are designed to move from one place to another place, another place to another place. Of course, not from not from America to China, not like that. But there is certain amount of distance, this platform, they can move uh, from within the small periphery of the area. So why this is quite, this is the called as the jack-up platforms, but they're designed to uh, use for the smaller areas around is to move out from one place to another place for the purpose of drilling or whatever. The next one is the compliant tower. These are the towers which are narrow, flexible towers and pile foundation supporting the conventional deck of the drilling. And compliant towers are designed normally for the 450 to 900 mm level. So this is also one of the structure which is uh, used but it is, uh, it is very dangerous to have such a structure because of this wind waves and the sun and the wind velocity and the waves velocity combined together it may, could be dangerous at times so it has to be designed very very carefully then there's a drill ship again this is a different altogether a ball game the drill ship is a maritime vessel that has been fitted with the drilling apparatus you know you understood what i'm trying to say right so this is a ship with the drilling arrangement so when the ship has no limitation it can go to almost everywhere you know all part of the earth it can reach wherever it has an access so wherever they find an oil they can go and they can start drilling inside the seabed and uh, these uh, kind of a ships are very common these days and they are very popular also because they have mobility basically and they have structural integrity also due to the latest technological development and uh, this is what the drill ship means a ship with a drilling arrangement and they can go to the water depth and drill up to even 3600 meters also this is 12,000 feet so that's quite substantial this is a maximum but as I said you know as you drill longer or as you drill uh, deeper the capacity decreases of the total plant same thing happens but the systems and uh, the uh, ships are designed for that you know. so to handle all these things so when someone says that what is a drill ship, you need to understand what the drill ship means. It's a ship uh, or a vessel with a drilling arrangement to go to the seabed and drill it. So this is what uh, the drill ship means. And floating production system is there is FPSO, FSO, FSU. FPSO is floating production storage and offloading. FSO is floating storage and offloading. FSU uh, is floating storage unit. So these are the terminologies uh, which FPSO, that is a ship in, uh, with this drilling arrangements, is been used commonly. It's FPSO and subsea vessels, again, this has nothing to do with HVAC, but just for your understanding, I'm explaining uh, what does it mean, and how it looks like, and how this pipeline has been laid over here and how the oil gets collected over here it's been shown over here then this is uh, nothing but a tension leg platform this is again one of the type of uh, platform which is commonly being used in industry and uh, this again can drill up to 2000 uh, meter 
and in the water depth is again as you could see is quite deep so this some uh, structure looks similar to semi submersible if you see but it's bit different and uh, this is also been used in some of the with the technological advances so someone says that tension like platform you can understand what does it mean and uh, it eliminates most of the vertical movement of the structure being if you see the legs are triangular in shape uh, so it helps sometimes uh, considering of course lot of designing happens over here so tension leg platform is also one of the uh, type of the platform and there is a SPAR platform or some sometimes people have spar platforms over here and they have also their own advantages over here and again the construction is different and they can work up to the 1700 meter uh, deep water so uh, this is a vertical cylinder kind of an arrangement uh, which helps the platform to give the stability again SPR and SPAR platforms are not uh, much or very common in the industry yeah again this is again not a part of an HVAC but you should understand when someone says what is SPAR platform so these are the SPAR platforms in the maintenance and supply if you see the typical uh, offshore production platform is self-sufficient in energy and water needs and electrical house generation and water desalinators and all of the all of the equipment are also installed there necessary to process the oil and stuff like that they have their own dg you know they have their own living arrangement the water has been provided and there's a plan there to you know, uh, convert the sea water into the potable water so all things the oil and gas platform has its own inbuilt system already there and next thing is that you know elements in oil and gas product includes the wellhead there are some elements and terminologies which are very commonly used in industry that is wellhead production manifold production separator then glycol separator to dry gas gas compressors then the, the water injection pumps and oil and gas export metering and lot there are, there are a lot of equipment for the oil and gas so again this is not a part of uh, the HVAC so it's just terminology is used in the industry so you should be aware of it then all production facilities are designed to have the minimum environmental impact this also we are, we are going to cover deeply in our course that how the impact of the environment takes place in the HVAC and larger platforms are consist of uh, consist by the smaller ESVs uh, that is a, a emergency support vessels because there has to be a support vessel also that something happens to the, uh, to the platform and there should be an evacuation plan so emergency vessels are also there to support the main, uh, main uh, structural platforms so the rescue operation can take place very very efficiently and during the normal operations the PSVs uh, also have some provisions uh, for the safety and standby rescue of the fire boards also are there and firefighting, fire, firefighting system is anyway the part of the entire platform so one has to be always be on the toes on the safety so just to have the maintenance of the platform and why we are working on the platform as you see it's surrounded by the sea there is no if some fire is there all you need to is just jump in the water so anyway there is a fear of dying you know either by burning or by drowning so unlike the building sector at least you can run uh, over the road and you can safeguard yourself but here that risk is not risk is always there so you have to be super safe and super uh, efficient and looking for the safety of yourself and your colleagues and the process also so it's a tough job that's why this industry is well paid uh, see the crew also is very important crew is nothing but a staff uh, which is required if you see uh, in, in industries like marine industry or the aviation industry they don't call it as a staff they call it as a crew the crew and size and composition of the crew for the offshore installation is greatly important uh, and it greatly varies also for platform to platform the requirement varies for the number of people needed and the skills are needed because cost intensive nature of the operating of the offshore platform it is important to maximize the productivity by ensuring the work continues the 24 by 7 because as you say it's a skilled kind of a work and it falls under the skilled category so you need the skilled manpower and skilled manpower comes with a cost 
so to keep them busy is also very very important over here so this is why uh, the proper planning of and maximizing the productivity comes into picture so that the work continues for 24 by 7 and you extract more and more oil in efficient and a safe manner and this means that uh, there are completely uh, two complete crews you know uh, one day shift and one is night shift okay so <laughs> It doesn't mean that you know if I have to continue my work 24 by 7, a one shift cannot work. You know, two shift has to be there. They should be working for 12 hours each. So when one shift goes, other shift comes in, and when one shift goes, it goes into the LQ area, that is the living quarter area, and they take a rest over there on the other platform. And when the other duty starts, they again come back. So this is what we call as an as an uh, rotational uh, duty. Or sometimes when they, when they finish certain amount of time or say 28 days on platform, they go back to the home and again come back after 28 days. This is what they mean. These are the essential uh, personnel which are required to be on board. And uh, not all these personnel are present on every platform. On smaller, pla on smaller platforms, workers will be responsible for several areas. The names are shown in, uh, are not industry type. It means that you know the list which is given here doesn't mean that they all have to be there on a single platform. Depend even one person can do a multiple job or a multiple responsibilities. But these are the some commonly used uh, terminologies uh, for the marine oil and gas offshore industry for the people. So if if you see in architectural layout, some of the rooms are there, and we'll find some of the room names. So you will understand what does it mean. You will understand that okay, this room is allocated to this, and this person, this person is supposed to do this job. So while providing the air conditioning and all, you can think wisely while giving the air and which is important, which is not important. You can think about it. So when I say OIM, that is offshore installation manager, it is the ultimate authority during uh, his shift and makes essential decision regarding the operation of the platform. He is the important man uh, the boss of the entire platform so he's been called as oim that is offshore installation manager then there's a otl that is a operation team leader he's also very second next in charge is otm is operational team leader then next is the offshore operation uh, engineer he's a senior technical authority you know one is the management aspect is oim OIM takes place of the management, then the OTL, that is operational team leader, takes on the technical decisions pertaining to that. So he is also equally important over here. Then the PSTL or uh, operations coordinator for managing the crew changes. So this is, this is also very very important, that is coordination is also required between each discipline or each functions. So this is being taken care by PSTL or the operations coordinator. Then dynamic positioning operator, then navigation, then ship pressure, maneuvering, module, station keeping, and fire and gas system operations in the event of accident. These are also some of the functions which need to be coordinated together or daily, daily drills or weekly drills also happens to keep everything in place. So in the event of fire, nobody should get panic. When second mate is there, that is he meets the many requirement to flag state, operates the fast rescue craft and cargo ops and fire team. There's a lot of responsibility on this second mate and the third mate. Then there's a ballast control operator. This is also one of the very important terms. Then there is a crane operator which operates the crane for lifting the cargo around the platforms and between the boards. Imagine uh, you have a you have a platform, but you need some services. You need food to come in, right? Food you cannot grow in the sea. So the food cargo, food container, which is made up of the fish, meat, seed, vegetables, fruits, which get processed inside the kitchen, inside the platform. So this fruit, all the services are coming. There are various spare parts are coming. So all these things uh, are coming. So you need uh, the crane to take out the cargo and keep it at the layout, lay down area. So the crane operation also takes place so you, need, you will see that there is a crane installation on the fixed platform there is again a heli deck is there heli deck is a thing but where the helicopter is going to land over here in case of emergency evacuation or in case of someone 
has a serious injury he cannot wait till the boat comes so someone is uh, the, the helicopter has to be there to take out uh, the person who is seriously injured on the platform and the transportation of the people from shore to uh, again the platform also helicopter is very important so uh, this is what uh, crane operator is there then scaffolding to rig the scaff uh, and the scaffolders are required to rig up the scaffolding so if you see uh, some you need to do some work you need to put a scaffolding uh, on the platform for maintenance or whatever purpose so scaffolders are required then box vanes for maintaining the life boards to maintain life supports or to control room operators are needed to uh, work in the control room and see whether all process parameters are in operation or not and the uh, the catering crew is also needed because people need food so catering is needed so people have uh, the chefs and his staff comes and he has to prepare the food over there and you need to stay there to provide the arrangement for the crew over there then laundry is there then clean, cleaning of accommodation is needed so all this stuff you know as as you see in hotel it's like a hotel the thing is but it's a hotel people come and stay there they have a laundry they have a galley kitchen and mess room recreation room so they have to be taken care of so this support services are also equally important a helicopter pilot is also uh, comes and stays there then you have a, a production techs are there who takes care of the production activities over there a staff is there technical staff is there drillers are there riggers are there and you have electrical instrumentation staff air conditioning staff is there and the maintenance technicians are there so it's a hard to get a, a small village or small town on a small structure so hope uh, you have got the basic glimpse of the oil and gas offshore industry however whatever i have told you about the industry is not even 0.001% also it's a huge industry altogether but just to have a basic understanding or to begin with for the hvac this is what the oil and gas offshore industry is all about which you should know at least to begin with there's a huge ocean and we are going to cover it subsequently in session by session course by course what does it mean and what what the oil and gas industry means to hvac and how it helps each other uh, so let's just stay tuned and we have more to come stay focused and have a great learning experience thank you